Have you ever looked at someone's landscape photos and just been amazed at how sharp the photo is from the foreground all the way to the background? Then you look at your own photos and you're like, why is mine not as sharp throughout the whole image? That's because of focus stacking. And that is the one feature I wish Sony cameras had. And you know what? Sony finally did it with the A7R5. You can now focus stack in body. I'm gonna show you how to configure it on your A7R5 camera. Then we're gonna jump into Lightroom and Photoshop to import and get those images stacked together so that it is sharp from foreground to background. But before we jump in, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Brian Matias. I'm a photo educator who helps photographers like you get better looking landscape and travel and wildlife photos using software like Lightroom and Photoshop and some other third party apps. So with that, let's jump right in. All right, so the easiest way for me to show you how to focus stack using a Sony a7R5 is to just do it in a controlled environment. So I'm using my desk here and you can see two familiar characters. Hopefully they're familiar. The one closest to the camera is Voltron and behind him is Hulk Buster Iron Man. And you might be wondering, all right, well, why would I need to focus stack here? Uh, in reality, the Hulkbuster figure is about 10 inches behind Voltron. So here, if I go ahead and I put uh, the focus reticle on Voltron's eye closest to the camera and I press my back button autofocus, which I have a video on, by the way, and then I press the shutter button, let's go ahead and preview that image. So here's the image, and if I zoom in, you can see that Voltron is nice and sharp, but as we go over to Hulkbuster Iron Man, he is out of focus. And as you might guess, if I move the focus dot here to Hulkbuster, and then I take my photo and then zoom in, you'll see that he is in focus, but Voltron is going to be out of focus. And that is even despite the fact that I'm shooting at F13, which is a pretty solid aperture, right? Like, you know, we can even close it down more, but it won't help that much. And this is the benefit of focus stacking. Focus stacking is where you take multiple exposures using ideally the same exposure values. And unlike HDR bracketing, where you're adjusting the shutter speed to get different exposure values with focus stacking bracketing, you are adjusting the focal point uh, or you're moving the, the focus ring of the lens throughout the frame to get different planes of focus. So before that was something that you kind of had to do manually um, with cameras that didn't have built in focus stacking. You'd have to actually like, you know, I would take a photo and I would focus in the foreground. I'll take another one a little bit further back, a little bit further back and so on until I got all the way to the background. And then I would use software to combine them. Now what we can do with the Sony a7R5 is just do that all in camera. So first thing I wanna show you is there are, are a few settings in the camera's menu that I want you to pay attention to. So to get to them, you'll go to the left here and you'll go down to this camera icon. Then you're gonna go over and go to number five, which is drive mode because the focus bracketing is a drive mode setting. And then we're gonna to go to bracket settings here. Now, this one, in my opinion, this is the most important setting um, for bracketing, whether it's HDR bracketing or focus stack bracketing. And that is the self timer dur during bracket. And what this does is it essentially allows you to set a delay of two, five or 10 seconds from after you press the shutter button to initiate the bracket. I like two seconds. I think two seconds is great. Um, if you press off, which I believe is the default setting, then as soon as you press the shutter button, the bracket sequence will begin. Problem with that is even just by pressing a shutter button uh, on the camera, you could introduce movement. And much like HDR bracketing, you want the camera to be as still as possible. You do not want the camera to move with um, focus stack bracketing. So two seconds is good. The bracket order, this is more for exposure bracketing for HDR, it's where you start at the zero exposure, then go to underexposed and overexposed. And then if you go to focus bracket settings, this is a sub menu here of um, how you want, there's really no option for the focus bracket order. Um, at least, I don't know what, I, I don't know what this is. If, if Here's a cool thing though. Here's a little cool thing. On the bottom, you'll see there is the menu with um, to, to go back and then there's the trash can, which is with a question mark. If you press the trash can, it actually will give you 
a little explanation. So, and this is for just about everything in the Sony a7R5 menu system. So I think this is really cool. Um, so here it says it shoots by focusing on the first image and then shifting focus back and forth from the second and subsequent images. I don't want that. I just want it to go from the closest all the way back. So that's my, my setting there. I don't want exposure smoothing. If we look at that, that's gonna adjust the exposure value when shooting. I don't want the camera to do anything like that. Shooting interval, this is also a good one. This really depends on your subject matter. So this basically tells the camera, should it wait any time in between the, the brackets? If you're out shooting uh, focus stacks for landscapes, you really wanna take those photos as quickly as possible because you know the more things move, uh, whether it's through wind or moving water or something like that, uh, the more difficult of a time the focus stacking algorithm will have to blend those images together. If you're in a studio environment or something, kind of like I am here where it's totally controlled, sure, you can set the interval between them. I'm just going to stick with shortest for now. And then finally, if you want to save the specifically the focus bracket images to a separate folder, you can do that by putting it to a new folder for me, it doesn't really matter. And so those are the settings that as far as just configuring bracketing that I think are important to pay attention to. All right, so that was the bracket settings. Now you have to enable or engage focus bracketing. To do that, I have the drive mode configured. I think it's the default setting by pressing on the left side of the wheel um, on the back of the camera. You can see that brings you to drive mode. And then you're gonna scroll down to BRK for bracket focus. Now, there are two settings here that are really important um, that you want to focus on. The first is the step width. And if we press the trash can icon to get a definition, you'll see here it says sets the focus shift interval when shooting with focus bracket. Reducing the number makes the focus shift interval smaller. So what does that mean? That basically con this controls in a very kind of <laughs> unscientific way, I would say, um, the distance that the, the camera will move focus. Uh, so the standard is for, if you were shooting say landscapes and it was, and you wanted your, the focus to be from the foreground all the way to the background, and you don't necessarily want to take a hundred photos for that. Um, you can bring this up towards 10, which is wide. Now that's not necessary. I don't think that's necessarily for a wide angle lens per se. That's just simply get telling the camera to allow for the widest shift in focus from bracket to bracket. What that means is it'll take fewer exposures to get the, uh, the bracket sequence. And here's the other thing, and I'll show this to you in a second, but um, basically the camera will, fo uh, will take its focus brackets from whatever point of focus you configure. So that should typically be the closest point of focus you care about. And then it'll just automatically shoot um, to infinity. There is no setting that I know of currently, and I really hope Sony does this, but there is no setting to, to say, I want you to, fo to create focus stacks from this point of focus to that point of focus. Right now, it's just from whatever point of focus you specify all the way out to infinity. So I found in my experience that really the, the default standard f is fine. Um, again, if you were shooting say macro and you and every single like millimeter of focal plane is important to you, then you'd want to go down to narrow. And this would take, you know, a lot more exposures, but you would get um, very, very shorter increments of focus push. So we're going to go with four here. And then the next thing here is just how many shots you want. So, you know, 50 is typically a good round number. That's not going to, this is the important distinction. This is not saying that the camera will take 50 shots. It's just telling the camera the maximum number of shots it should take or could take for that sequence. If the camera reaches infinity before 50 exposures, it'll stop. So you'll see that right now. So here are my settings. I'm gonna press the middle button inside the ring to commit and we're back. So now what do you do? Well. The first thing you'll want to do is kind of get your exposure value set. So here, let's say you want to, you know, adjust the ISO a little bit um, and maybe close the aperture and make the shutter speed a little bit slower, just a little bit. All right, cool. So you've this is the these are going to be the settings as the exposure settings that the camera will use for every exposure. It's not going to adjust that. The only thing it's going to adjust is uh, the point of focus. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put focus, the focus box kind of right here 
on the corner of Voltron because that little kind of eyebrow is a little bit closer to the camera than the eye. So I want to start there. Now we're basically done. That from this point forward, um, the camera will take a sequence until it reaches infinity. So remember, I have a two second delay. I'm going to press the shutter button now. One, two, and it's going to go. All right, so that's it. And I don't know if you caught the, the, the shutter count or the frame count. I believe it was around 25 or 26 frames. So even though um, we gave it a maximum of 50, it reached infinity at about 25 or 26 frames. And you can see here that the point of focus is no longer on Voltron. It ended kind of behind even, I think Hulkbuster might've even tried to get some of the wall behind. So with that, we are done. That's all that focus stacking. Uh, that's the focus stacking process in camera. The one important thing that I want to remind you, we're still in focus bracket mode. So if that was all you wanted, if you were done with your focus bracketing, remember to go back to drive mode and then go back up either to burst mode or single shooting mode or any other mode you want. But don't forget that if you don't change it, you'll still be in focus bracketing mode. If you press the shutter button, it'll start um, taking the focus brackets. You could cancel that mid sequence, so don't worry about that. But just remember that um, if you don't change anything, you'll still be in focus bracketing. So now we've got the exposures. You can see them here. Um, if I kind of, this is kind of cool. It's almost like a focus breathing effect, how the camera is moving the plane of focus from the front to the back. But now we need to take these photos and we'll bring them into Lightroom uh, just to manage them. And then I'll show you how to get them into Photoshop to stack them. All right, so that was kind of cool, right? Like we were able to get our focus brackets right in camera automatically. The camera did all the work, which is awesome. And similar to HDR. So with HDR, when you get your exposure brackets, you have to bring them into your uh, photo app like Lightroom, and then you need to tone map them to combine them together. Now we need to take our focus brackets, we'll bring them into Lightroom, and I'm gonna show you how to use Photoshop to combine them together so we get that nice, uh, image where everything from the foreground to the background is sharp. So let me show you this right now. All right, so here you can see these are all the images that I took from that focus bracket. And you can see that the RAW and the JPEGs are next to each other. I'm just going to use the JPEG files for this because trust me, these RAW files are gigantic and there's no need to uh, spend the time processing because it will take a lot longer to process the RAW files for this. Trust me, I tested it um, and it's great if this was a landscape photo that I actually cared about, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna shoot JPEG. And the easiest way to do that is to change the sort to file type here. So now the raw files are together followed by the JPEGs. I'm gonna uncheck all, and then I'm gonna start with the first JPEG in the sequence, go to the last one, shift click them and press the check mark. So now only the JPEG files will be imported and I have my folder here, and then I'm gonna click on import. All right, now that the photos are imported, uh, you can see here is the first image in the sequence. And if we zoom in, you can see that the eyebrow where I focused is sharp, but Hulkbuster is not. Now, one important thing to remember, these first two images were the examples I took that I showed you where I, the first one I focused on uh, Voltron and the second one I focused on Hulkbuster. So you want to remember that uh, because we, if you remember in the bracket settings, we did not choose the option to put the focus brackets in a new folder. We just kept everything in the current folder. When you focus, when you go to stack the focus bracketed images, only select the ones that are part of the sequence. In this case here, I don't need these two images. I'm just gonna delete them. And now we only have the focus bracketed images. And if I press and hold the right arrow key, you can see the way the focus, kind of the, the way the focus bracket sequence went through. So now it's time to combine all of these together. So to do that, just highlight all of the images, right click, go to edit in, and this is very important. You're gonna to go to open as layers in Photoshop, which will put each of these images into the same document, but on their own layer. Now, before we jump in, give me like 20 seconds to tell you about my landscape AI preset packs that I built for Lightroom Photoshop Camera Raw. These presets use Adobe's powerful AI masking tools. So the presets were built specifically to improve the looks of the sky of your landscape photos and the foregrounds of your photos separately. So you can apply a preset 
for the sky, it will automatically identify your sky and then improve it. Same thing with the foreground and the full scene packs. I'll drop a link in the description below. Check them out. Your support is really appreciated. It helps me continue to make these videos for you. Again, I thank you very much. All right, let's go back to it. So here you can see all of the images from that focus bracket are on their own layer here. Here, I'll make these, this little layers panel a little bit larger here. Now, it's pretty straightforward what you need to do to focus stack. You don't wanna do anything to the layers individually. Notice that I didn't do anything in Lightroom first. I just took the images as soon as I imported them and sent them to Photoshop. So you'll wanna select all of the layers here and then go to edit and select auto align layers. And then just select auto. I found auto to be perfectly satisfactory. And it'll basically look at each layer and ensure that they are aligned correctly. So let's go ahead and click okay. And now that you can see here, the that auto align layers basically adjusts each of these layers so that they will overlap correctly. And that's critical for the focus stacking, which is the next step. And depending on the type of images that you opened up. So if we sent the raw files, or in this case, these were full res JPEGs, it took a little bit of time. So just be prepared for that. The next step, now that we aligned it, is to go back to edit. And right after auto align layers, we're gonna select auto blend layers. And here you'll wanna make sure that we are stacking the images. We're not using a pano. Uh, and then these two options are up to you. I'm okay with seamless tones and colors. That's fine, I'll, I'll let it do that to ensure that the the images are blended together properly. And then uh, content aware fill transparent areas. So if the focus stack has to adjust the overall composition, uh, it can automatically content aware fill transparent areas. That's okay too. Uh, again, totally up to you if you wanna use these, but the key is to hit stack images and then let's click okay. All right, so here we now have our focus stacked image. You can see it's put on its own layer. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see now that Voltron is in focus and so is Hulkbuster. We now have this kind of really nice focus stack. Now, there are times where you might see some weird artifacts, like if we go to the edge over here, um, you can see that there are some weird artifacts. Now, this could be a, a process of the focus stacking. Photoshop has a decent focus stacking function, but there are other applications out there that might do a better job. The other thing that you might want to consider is changing that focus width setting that I showed you on the back of the camera. We had it at four. Um, and so you might want to bring it narrower down to three or two if the objects are really close together. Um, so those are the kinds of things that you'll sometimes run into. In this case here, I could just crop the, the composition and just get rid of this a little bit over here. This also could be due to the um, content aware fill. We don't know because I had it enabled. If I didn't have it enabled, then I would be able to see the areas where Photoshop wasn't able to properly focus stack. So it's not absolutely perfect, but I found that in the landscape photography, it's a bit more forgiving, especially if the foreground, middle ground, background are further away from each other. Whereas here, you can see that everything is very close together. So every sliver of focus needs to be sharp. Uh, so that's just something to consider. And then the other thing to consider is um, when you're photographing focus stacked brackets in the field, make sure that one, your camera's on a tripod, but two, that ideally things are not uh, moving too crazily in the scene because that can affect it. I hope you found the Sony a7R5 focus stacking tutorial helpful. I have another video right here where I show you how I focus stack in the field with a camera that doesn't have focus stacking functionality built in. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, hit the bell icon and the like button, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.